Hey, buddies, it's your girl, Christine, and here's a how to from me to you. Yes, I did rhyme. I do that, boo. Ooh. So, this is how to set up your stream on YouTube. <laughs> Lately, I've been having more and more friends test the waters here on the YouTube side when it comes to streaming. And so, I've been helping them set up their streams or at least learn the dashboard. And I was like, hey, I'm sure that there are other creators or even people who are wanting to start to stream that could use this information. So I'm like, let me make a video. Let's dive in. Let's talk about it. You can definitely post any questions you may have down below, especially if you want me to do another video to dive more into those specific questions. So I'm going to use the podcast channel as our template for how to set up your YouTube stream. There are a couple different ways that you can get to the live dashboard, which is what YouTube calls their dashboard at which you can set up your stream and then see the details of your stream. You can either go to the top of YouTube right here and click the little camera button with the plus sign that's there that says create. And then you can go right to go live. Bam. Now you're on this screen where you can schedule your live stream. The other way that you can do this is by going to your YouTube dashboard, which you can do by clicking YouTube studio right here or, you know, customize channel, manage videos. Any of these will take you to the YouTube dashboard. And from here, this is where you can upload your videos. This is where you go live. And this is where you can create a community post. We want to go live. So let's click this button. But you have a couple different ways that you can stream on YouTube. You can stream using your webcam, which is kind of similar to like a just chatting thing that you would do on Twitch, where you would have your webcam. You just sit, you talk with your audience and you can go back and forth. You can also do like a Q&A and things like that. When you come in this screen, you can put in the information of the stream, which we will get into in a second. But when you scroll down and it says, how do you want to go live? It'll default to webcam. This is not something that's clickable or changeable. Um, once you click here, that's what's available here. But if this is not the type of stream you want to do, you can click manage. It'll take you right out of the screen. Don't click back. If you click back, it'll take you back to your YouTube dashboard instead of to this a continuation of the screen. You can change the category, whatever you've put as the last category, it'll tend to stick there, but I have not used this feature on this channel. I typically use this feature on my React channel because I do live watch alongs of Avatar The Last Airbender. Join us if you'd like to. But with the live watch along, since I'm not showing my the content during the stream, I'm just showing my face during the live watch along and talking with the audience, I use this feature on there. Put in all your information. You're gonna go through monetization, customization, visibility again we're going to go through that in a second but at the end of this you will have the option to select the exact camera that you want to use and your mic that you want to use for your stream and you can have your thumbnail all of that set and then you can go live. Another way that you can stream on YouTube is if you are using a streaming software. Streaming using an encoder allows an endless amount of possibilities on how you can stream and what you can do via whatever encoder it is that you are using. I typically use OBS to stream. I have used Streamlabs before, but I prefer OBS. Use whatever works for you. This is the screen you will see if that's the type of stream you're doing. This is where your title will be, the category, whether it's a public video, private, unlisted, however you're streaming, your monetization, viewers, likes, chat, all this information that you can see. This is the actual dashboard you will see every time you're streaming. Under this viewfinder where you see this gray dot and it says, start sending us your video video from your streaming software to go live, essentially a couple different things can happen, right? One is if you've scheduled your stream beforehand and you put in your stream key, you've put in your stream URL, or you've connected it via an account that some um, encoders have access to, when you hit start streaming, you'll have to come back to this screen. You're gonna wait till this turns green. When it turns green, you're gonna see a button at the top right that says go live, and you'll click that and you'll go live. However, there is a setting that you are able to make where once you go live in your encoder software, you will be live on YouTube. When you do that, it will turn green, but the stream will automatically start. So it is something that you'll see on this additional serve setting side. Again, with this particular account, I think I have to verify my phone number in order to get to see access to that, but it'll be something that'll say auto start. And you can toggle that on or toggle that off depending on whatever your needs may be. We'll dive into the tidbits of this bottom a little bit more after I show you how to set up your stream. It's like, cool, Christine, you told me all this information, but how do I set up my stream, right? I go to manage stream. So I click here on manage. I hit schedule stream. And the great thing about schedule stream is if you have streamed on this channel before, 
you can reuse those settings that you've previously put in depending on whatever your needs are. But for the sake of this, let's go to create new and then we'll do one where we show the reuse settings. So let's title the stream. I'm gonna title this test test. Since I do have upload defaults, those do appear right here um, where I'm like, let us know what you think. Check out the audio version of our podcast. I include the link, I include the links of the host of the podcast as well. And it says, how do you wanna go live? I have streaming software because I'll be using OBS. So it says streaming software there, but you can click and you can change it here at this option of webcam or mobile if you want to. The category, we're gonna change it to entertainment. Thumbnail, you don't have to upload a thumbnail. I recommend that you do. But if you don't, it'll default give you this graphic. You can let that be your thing if you'd like, but I would suggest you get a thumbnail so that way it can really grab the attention of your viewers to click on it. You can set up your playlist here. I have a bunch of playlists that I already have for this podcast channel, but you can click and that way when it's automatically done or uploaded as a VOD, it'll be in that particular playlist. You can set the audience, whether it's for kids or not made for kids. If it is a stream with a paid pr uh, promotion, you'll wanna click this. Some brands want you to click this. Some brands may not mention it. Be sure to read your contracts, but some brands will tell you, hey, click that. So definitely make sure you do. And then here's where you have your tags. I suggest filling it up to 500. Having these tags does not determine your placement on SEO when someone's searching keywords for specific things on YouTube. However, having a lot of tags that are specific to whatever it is that you're playing or talking about or discussing or just chatting or your channel provides an opportunity that viewers will come across your content. So I recommend filling it up to 500. Again, doesn't determine your placement, but provides an opportunity that someone searching that term will come across your content. So optimize. All right, so let's hit next. You'll be brought to this, opti this monetization screen. A lot of times it's defaulted to off. So you wanna make sure you turn this on. And even sometimes YouTube will glitch, and I'll tell you this right now, YouTube will glitch and you will save it here. You do it, then you go back to that dashboard I showed you, and then you will see that it doesn't say um, that it's on, it'll say it's off. So you have to go back in and fix that. And I'll show you how to do that. So this is on. Make sure all of these are clipped to optimize the ad revenue potential of the stream. This is a new thing that some people have seen and some people have not. So keep an eye out. This is a live ad settings. This is brand new saying automatically place mid-roll ads during your stream. This is something that's new that they're rolling out. So definitely click that, to learn more read over everything, see if it fits for your channel. If you don't want to click it, you don't have to if you don't want auto ads to roll out, but I would like some auto ads to roll out, so I'm gonna click that button. Hit next. So here's the more of the customization of your stream. This is a live chat where everybody can see your live chat. Live chat replay just means that when the stream is done and the stream auto archives as a VOD on your channel, people are able to see the chat just as it played as the live. You can click that if you'd like for people to see that, you can turn it off if you don't want people to see that, but you definitely wanna click it before you started or ended your stream. The participant modes, you can choose anyone to be able to talk in the chat. So subscribers only, you can make it members only if you'd like to. Live commentary meaning specific users, very specific. If you hit over this question mark, it says, live commentary mode limits participants to the people you approve for your channel. You can set up a, a message delay. You can have a slow mode. I typically do a slow mode of 45 seconds, just in case things get a little crazy and you're trying to read the chat, or if people are spamming, they're kind of delayed on their ability to spam. So that way you can read through the important things that you would like to read during a chat. You can also edit your moderators, blacklist words, and more in your community settings. And there's a link right there for you to click. That'll take you to the setting page to make those changes before your stream. This is redirect. This is something that you can do, essentially send your audience to someone else. They are still working on this. This is still something that is not 100% up to complete potential and functionality. You can read more about it, hit that community settings, read more about it. I wanna wait till this is like 100% before I'm like, hey guys, make sure you use it, you know? Trailer, this is really cool because the video has to be anywhere from 15 seconds to three minutes for like a member promo video. It could be literally any video. It could be like, hey, check out my channel, like an intro video type of thing, whatever it may be. As long as it's anywhere between 15 seconds and three minutes, you can put it right here. You, what you would do is you would hit add and you would select the video that you would want them to see. Anyone that's coming into the live before you start your live, they will see this video. And when the video is done, they'll be just waiting in your chat until your stream starts. 
So this is really cool. I use it typically for my members. I do. I don't have a member promo video on this channel yet. We're gonna. We're actually working on that right now. Once that's completed, that is something that my audience will see when we start this podcast stream. All right. So let's hit next. And over here, you'll be able to see choose your visibility. Whether you want this to be a private stream, an unlisted stream, members only stream. It can be a public stream. You would select the time and or the time and date, then hit done. For members only, something that you want to remember is that if you do make a, this a members only stream, YouTube has not yet implemented something where the members can be notified. Um, it's something I hope that they fix and they work on, but you know, we'll see. This essentially, if you do a members only stream, you will then need to go to your community tab, share the stream on your community tab and choose uh, members only to be able to see that community post and let your members know that you were live. Also, you can let them know on Twitter so that they can go. But the only way that they are going to see it, because they're not going to see it on your homepage, they're not going to see it on your videos page, they're not going to see it as a live now on the top of your page, you will have to let them know separately. I know, I know it sucks, but hopefully YouTube will fix that and change that now. We're all done. We hit done. And then we are brought back to this dashboard. Now, let's say you look at the screen, you're about to start your stream and you notice monetization off because that, sometimes that happens. Even though I've been doing this for a long time, sometimes it happens. You click here, you click edit, then you click on the left, you'll see details, customization and monetization. These are the tabs we saw earlier. Click monetization and make sure you turn that baby back to on, okay? Since we're all good, I'm just gonna hit cancel for now. Um, but here you can see I have this availability now where I can hit auto start since I scheduled it. And when I start my OBS, the stream will automatically start. Looking at the tidbits down below so you can kind of see what this live dashboard looks like, you'll see your stream key. And the cool thing about this is that you can have multiple stream keys. I did have a moment where dual streaming something for a company, this definitely came in handy and they walked me through what to do at that time. This is where you'll see your actual stream key. This is where you'll see your stream URL and your backup URL. For latency, I always choose ultra low latency. What latency means is essentially like a delay between when you say something in your stream and when your viewers see it. Now, if you have it on ultra low and your computer can keep up with it, your internet can keep, keep up with it that is what i recommend because that will be the quickest turnaround from when you say something in your stream and then your audience hears it which is great for engagement you have an option to choose low latency or normal latency where there is a, a certain amount of delay i'm not sure exactly how long of a delay it may be but you'll be able to tell when you say something in your stream like you ask a question and then you'll be able to see how long does it take before you start to see a bunch of answers in the chat now on this side you'll see that enable auto start that i just put on so when i start my stream my OBS, it'll automatically start and I won't have to hit that go live button, which um, you can enable auto stop. If you don't click these or don't have these toggled on, you'll have to end stream on YouTube. There's going to be a big red button. You can hit end stream and then you go to your encoder software and end stream there. Analytics is something you can see during your stream. Now, when you're alive, you're able to see your viewers, their concurrent viewers. It's going to change to concurrent viewers. Right now it says viewers waiting because we're not live yet, but likes, chat revenue, new members, all that stuff. Analytics is where you can also see that you can see how what's the rate at which people are chatting how many viewers do you have what's the average view duration viewer activity is where you can see your donations or your super chats or your members and this is only during this stream activity you're not going to see past streams you're not going to see people who maybe joined in between your streams when you are live this is the screen and the tab that you would choose in order to see the donations and members um, that you know, become members and donate while you're streaming. This is also where you can see your stream health. A lot of times it'll tell you right here where it's like YouTube is not receiving enough data, you know, blah, 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 blah. You'll see that here, it'll be yellow or it'll be red. And it's like warning colors like, hey, the stream is not 100% double check your settings. Um, it can tell you what bit rate you need to have on there. I think 4,500 is what the minimum it should be. So you wanna make sure you have that setting in your encoder, preferably before you start your stream or else you run into issues. You'll see your chat here. You can pop out your chat. Um, I typically do, cause I'll make this screen smaller and I'll have the chat available on the sidebar so I can look at it along with the other million things that I'm looking at while I'm streaming. If you hit X, it comes right back. Down below, you have emotes that you can choose. Um, you may have your own emotes if you have membership set up that you can use or even some fun ones from YouTube that, that are available. And then down here is this plus sign 
where you can do a poll, which is a great way to engage your audience into the content that you're producing while you are alive. Um, or you can start a Q&A. The thing with the Q&A though, is that let's say you start a Q&A, you type in a little thing, you're like, hey, um, ask me questions, blah, 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 and you start Q&A. This chat will change to the Q&A chat and you'll see live chat, you'll see top chat, you'll see Q&A chat. So essentially anyone who answers the question or types in a question under that prompt, their questions get put into a separate chat. Not a separate window though. YouTube, if you're listening, I do wish it was a separate window because then you can still see the live chat as that's going while engaging with the questions or answering the questions. As it stands right now, you're not able to do that on this screen. You're either looking at the live chat or you're looking at the Q&A. And that can be kind of annoying when you're like answering questions. You want to see what other people, what their answers may be and, answer, you know, kind of engage in a conversation about those those topics. And you're not able to because you you only can see one or the other. Oh, before I go, I want to show you up here. You can manually insert ads during your stream. The way it is right now, you don't know what type of ads are being shown and you don't know how the ads are being shown. You don't know if it's like a overlay over the whole entire screen. You don't know if it's at the bottom, on the side, or what it looks like. That's something that I do hope they change very soon. But as it stands right now, you can click this to insert an ad in your stream manually and you're going to see a pop up right here at the bottom that's going to say ads inserted. You again don't know how long, you don't know what it looks like, you don't know what it is, but you know it's there. <laughs> and this is the place where you can find the link to share your stream. It's that little arrow right here that's like a sideways arrow. You click that, you can stream or you can share your link through all these social medias or you can just copy the link and post it wherever you'd like to. But that is how to set up your YouTube stream. And I also showed you the dashboard. If you have any questions or you want to see more videos like this, let me know down below. Let me know of any other tips or things that you want to see. I'm down to help. Thanks for watching. And yeah, until next time, buddies.